Welcome to EZTV Presents TED Be another episode. Uh, today I'll show you guys uh, how to create a virtual machine. So this is a pretty simple how to create a virtual machine. And you guys will maybe think like why I'm making this video. Uh, the reason I'm making this video, a lot of the uh, BMR engineer make a common mistake when they create a virtual machine because whenever they think they are expert, they don't give enough time actually um, to do the proper configuration. That means uh, the BMR recommended configuration. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Um, so let me share my screen. All right. So I'll create a virtual machine. Um, in a ESXi host. Uh, basically, if you work in a large environment, you, you should be like, you will be um, use, most most probably you wanna use um, vCenter server. But uh, today I'm going to show you in, in a like, uh, in a vCenter, sorry, in a ESXi server, actually how you can create a virtual machine. So most of the time, it's, damn sure you're gonna create VM on a uh, through the vCenter because the reason you wanna use vCenter, you can get access all the ESXi host on your environment in a one console. That's why you're gonna use vCenter. But I'm showing here uh, through ESXi host because I just log in directly on ESXi host. So what are you gonna do? So you wanna create a virtual machine is your target. The virtual machine you're gonna create for maybe uh, any kind of operating system. It can be Linux, um, it can be Windows, or it can be something else. But our goal is to create a virtual machine first. Then we will have thought, think about like what kind of OS we're gonna install. So let's start. Um, right click on it, and you're gonna see it. See the on the left side virtual machine. So I just right click on it and create it and register VM. <clears throat> now it's open another window. So this interface is different when you create a VM uh, through the vCenter server. And you're gonna see the exact same if you log in an individual ESXi host and you want to create a virtual machine. All right, so but here's three options you can get like create a new virtual machine, deploy virtual machine from OBF or OBF files, or register an existing virtual machine. So <clears throat> we're gonna create a new virtual machine because we didn't create it, right? So we're gonna create a click, create new virtual machine, select this one and then click next. And then on the next screen it shows, <clears throat> provide the name. So you can provide a name based on your, uh, or company or organization naming uh, standard, like naming convention standard. So this is the naming convention which we use for our lab. Um, <clears throat> Syslab virtual private Windows uh, production ADDC, which is activity tree DC zero, actually three. We already built another two. So that's why it's gonna be three. <clears throat> now the most important thing, which most of the uh, BMR engineer make mistake in this field, they always just do next, next, next. The compatibility. Now you just need to understand what exactly the compatibility. So ESXi 6.5 virtual machine. Right now, the machine I'm logged in, this is ESXi 6.5. That's why by default compatibility is showing ESXi 6.5 virtual machine. If you log in any ESXi host, which is running with ESXi version 6.7, and you are going to create a virtual machine. In that time, it's gonna show compatible level, ESXi 6.7 virtual machine. If you log in an ESXi host, which has ESXi version 6.0, and you are <clears throat> trying to create a virtual machine, that time it's gonna show 6.0. If you log in an ESXi machine, which has a version 6.7, and you are going to create a virtual machine, the compatibility mode by default is gonna come here, ESXi 6.7. So <clears throat> now I'm sitting on 6.5, uh, but what should be my compatibility um, 
version, right? So which one is supposed to select? That's the question. So the question is, if I show you a, a, some diagram here, so in your environment, first you need to know actually how many SXI you have on your environment. And also uh, if your cluster has a mixed ESXi version. So for example, if I, I draw here like total six ESXi hosts. So out of six, two of them is 6.5, two of them is 6.01, and two of them is 6.7. And all six is in one cluster. And I'm going to create a virtual machine, right? So maybe I can create on, maybe I can create this virtual machine. Maybe I can create this virtual machine in here or here or here or here or here or here, right? Anywhere. So, if I select ESXi version 6.5, what does it mean? That means after I build the machine, ESXi and VMware has some um, flexibility. When after you build a machine, what you, why you are gonna build a machine? Because you're gonna maybe install some operating system. And on, on top of the operating system, maybe you're gonna install some application. So for giving the application high availability, you're gonna have a cluster system, right? So if something goes wrong, you create a virtual machine, you created a virtual machine in this host, right? In this host. This machine you created here, right? So if something goes wrong with this host, for any reason, if this host goes down, say if this one is down, so what, what gonna be happen? Automatically through the cluster system, through the high availability system, the machine will move from here to here or here or here or here. But now the question is, if you leave the compatibility level is 6.5, when you create a virtual machine like this, and you are trying to move the machine from this host to this host, and that time you will not be able to move. Why? Because you'll virtual machine compatibility level is 6.5 or higher. That means it can be moved from here to here or here or here or more higher, which is SXI 7, right? But it's not gonna move here. So that's why it's very important when you create a machine, you should know your environment, how many SXI you have and what kind of version is running. And is if this 6.0 uh, version SXA host is not on your same cluster or is in different cluster or in the different environment and never ever you don't need to move in that case you are okay but if you have the mixed environment like this you have to always choose the lower lower version so we are sitting on right now 6.5 but you can uh, for compatibility level you can use 6.0 it's not a problem now, guest OS family. So guest OS family, <clears throat> you should select based on what kind of operating system you're gonna install, Linux, Mac OS, others, Windows. So we're gonna install Windows. So you select Windows and then guest OS version. Whenever you select the Windows, then you have to select the what kind of Windows version you're gonna install. So in our case, we're gonna install 2016 or later. That means if you select this one, you can install 2016 or 2019 or 2022. Okay, um, and click next. Now, data store. So we have only two data store. One is local one, another one is um, uh, share storage, which is our NAS storage. But in your environment, maybe you wanna have iSCSI or FCSN storage, or you can have multiple storage, data store. So multiple data stores. So you can select any one based on your target or your requirement. It's, it's not a problem. For creating a virtual machine, I need the storage. That's why I, I need to select one of them. So most of the case, most of the case, you should create a machine on a shared storage. This is highly recommended, shared storage, not a local storage. But in my case, to get a better performance or because um, to utilize my local storage, I'm, I'm going to install here. It's just exceptional for me. I'm doing on data store one, it's a local storage. But in your case, if you work for an organization, you should be, you should be installed on shared storage because 
if you don't install the share stores, you like you cannot meet the requirement with uh, for uh, what is called um, Bmotion um, configuring high availability, all those stuffs. So just select a data store and then click next. Now this is the main thing you need. You need to be very careful. Most of the system admin, like if I tell you, okay, um, the machine requirement, someone is giving you machine requirement, I need eight CPU, I need 10, uh, eight uh, memory, eight gig, eight, eight gig of memory, and eight virtual CPU. So most of the VMware engineer put like eight like this. And this is not the correct configuration. The reason is whenever you create the virtual machine, all the time, just remember, all the time, expand it, all the time, expand it. And then see what's happened here. If you do the two core power socket. So you need to know actually how many core you have. How many core you have on your physical machine. So this is the physical machine, yes, Excel machine, right? I know this machine has only two socket. So if I leave like this, two and socket four, that means two times four is makes eight CPU, right? This is this is called vCPU, virtual CPU. But and when I select here two core, that means each socket gonna have two core. But in reality, in this physical machine, I don't have that many core. I have core, it's eight core, two socket processor. And each socket has eight core. Maybe you remember you have 16 core, 20 core, each processor, like it's each, each socket. That's fine, but because uh, core can be, the core can be more, but socket should be maybe two socket or four socket like this, maximum server. So if your physical, if your physical machine has four socket, in that case, this configuration is right. But if your ESX machine has only two socket and you configure like this, that means, th that means this is not a right configuration. But anyway, your machine gonna be run, but you will not get the exactly uh, exact performance based on the eight CPU. Whatever you're supposed to get, you, you will not get it. So in that case, what you should do if you need to assign eight B CPU, you have to increase the core. So if you do the four core socket two, it makes eight. That means each socket you are utilizing four core. And I have eight core in each socket. So it's, that's the right configuration. And another very important thing, which is most of the system admin and VMware engineer or VMware admin make mistake, which is they forget to check mark on this. What does it mean? CPU hot plug. That means enable CPU hot add. What does it mean? Why we need to check mark on it? So if you don't check mark on it, still, your configuration is fine, your VM gonna be work fine, but <clears throat> you will not get the, uh, what is called? Uh, for example, you, uh, you after you build a ESX machine, uh, sorry, virtual machine, you're gonna maybe install um, some application. So when your application is running and it's consuming most of your uh, CPU, and then the virtual machine is struggling for CPU, and it says CPU consumption is more than 90% or maybe 95%. And your machine is running slow. You need to increase the CPU. In that case, if you come here to just edit the virtual machine, you cannot increase the CPU on the fly because your machine is running, right? So if you want to increase it, you have to power off the machine, then you can increase it. But if you enable this option, you don't need to power off the machine on the fly. That means your application is running, your everything is running and user, there is no user interruption, no outage on the fly, you can enable, uh, you can increase the CPU. And so this is the, like the main configuration for the CPU. Now you can close it and memory. So you need eight gigabyte memory, right? So 
change it to gigabyte and then make it eight. The memory must be less than or equal to 3.98 terabyte. That means for one virtual machine in 6.5 is max support 3.98 terabyte of memory. But we, we're not gonna assign for a virtual machine a terabyte of memory. So it's 8 GB. The reason is before we change this one, we change to gigabyte and it was 4,000 something. That's why it gives us um, this error message. So close it, eight. But I said again, every time, just expand it. Whatever you wanna do, then you can, if you assign anything, just expand it. And then, um, don't forget to this one. Memory hot plug, enable it. So if you enable it on the fly, on the fly, when your application is running, your virtual machine is running, if you need to increase your memory, you can increase the memory. But if you don't enable it, you have to power it off, then you have to increase it. So don't forget to enable this, okay? Now, hard disk. Hard disk, so hard disk, say uh, 80 or 100, say 100 gigabyte. So 100 gigabyte you assign from the data store, whatever data store you select. And now disk provisioning. So disk provisioning by default is gonna be thick provision, lazy zero. That's another mistake. Most of the system is admin uh, that uh, most of the system admin or VMware admin or VMware engineer, they do this mistake. It's because by default is selected, they just do next, next, next. They assign the CPU and memory and then click next. But this is very important. Well, why is very important? Because you assign 100. So it's gonna be take 100 gigabyte of space. When you assign it for this virtual machine is gonna take 100 gigabyte, exactly 100 gigabyte, you take from the your total storage. And when you install operating system, whenever you install operating system, it's not gonna consume the whole 100 gigabyte. Maybe it's gonna be consumed 30 gigabyte. So rest um, 70 gigabyte is just idle space. And if you select thick provisioning lazy zero, in that case, from the total storage, it's gonna take 100. The VM is using the total 100 or not, it doesn't matter. VM not gonna share with other VM on your environment. But if you select thin provision, thin provision, in that case, you assign 100 gigabyte and your virtual machine is utilizing right now maybe um, 70, uh, 30 gigabyte and rest 70 gigabyte, it will release to the total storage and if some other VM needs storage, it can use it, utilize it. And later on, if you need more, you can get it back again. It's not a problem. But thick provision and thick provision, eagerly zero and lazy zero, uh, lazily zero, like in some, in some case, based on your application requirement, if whatever the application you plan to install on this VM, if the application required to have uh, thick provision, uh, Leslie zero or Leslie, in that case you should select. Otherwise, you should go with this thin provision. You can better utilize your storage. All right, that's done. And then network adapter. So network adapter. If you expand it, you can see here. By default, network adapter is BM network. So you can select different network name if you have a is, is different story based on the, uh, your network adapter configuration, network configuration. But by default is this. The reason I expanded, I want to show you here, adapter type, E1000E. So this is the type. This is the type by default selected if you install any kind of windows. And BMX Net 3 is, is gonna select automatically if you install any kind of Linux. Not only that, there is another difference. E100E, it can be handled 
uh, one gigabit of like one gig uh, network like the network bandwidth network tra tra transmitting speed is one gigabyte. It can support up to one gigabyte. But if if you have a ten gigabyte connection, physical connection, or your ESXi host, in that case, if you want better performance, better network performance, you can go with BMXNet three. So BMXNet three will able to uh, provide you ten gigabyte of network. But if you select by default, it's selected you one zero zero. So it, it's up to you if you know. Like your all ESXi host has a 10 gig network. In that case, you can go with BMX Net 3. So it's up to you. And then CD ROM. So host device and data store. So, so which operating system we're going to install? Because we select uh, 2016. So I select 2016 because I have the 2016 ISO file already uploaded to our data store. So I just go to the data store and from there I select the ISO file. Then that's all. And make sure, make sure, make sure the CD ROM, this one and this one is connected. So this is the basic configuration. And another information for you guys, like network adapter. If you need more network adapter, you can add it, just click add network adapter. And now a question, how many network adapter you can add in a virtual machine? What is the minimum, what is the maximum? Minimum is one you, you know already. And what's the maximum? Maximum is total 10 network adapter you can add in a virtual machine. And hard drive. So if you need more hard drive, you can add hard disk, hard disk, add hard disk. You can just click add hard disk, it's gonna be added here. All right. Now, so your BM, yeah, BM virtual machine configuration is done. I'm not going to show you how to install the OS in this video. I'm going to show you in a later in another video. But this is the basic BM configuration, virtual machine configuration, right? But another thing, you guys need to remember again, most of the system admin and BM or admin or BM manager make this mistake also. What's the mistake? If you go to the next step, because everybody is doing complete all the virtual hardware tab. They all, um, most of the people, they complete this, but they forget to complete this side, this uh, tab, BM options. So on the BM option tab, if you click, you're gonna see here some options. You don't need to go each and every options. Just only one thing very important, which is BMR tools. If you expand it, you're gonna see here, Tools upgrade. Check and upgrade BMR tools before each power on. The reason is whenever BMR release a new BMR tools, so on the virtual machine, on, on your ESXA host, is going to pop up on the virtual, when you click a virtual machine, it's going to pop up alert. BMR, needs, BMR tools needs to be updated. But if you have a, like say 10 or 50 virtual machine and you forget to check mark on it and all of the 50 virtual machine in, running on a production and all of them is showing, BMR tools needs to be updated. In that case, what do you have to do? You have to schedule a maintenance and you have to install BMR tools manually and then you have to reboot each and every machine, which is very, painful. So if you check mark on it, and also another most important, which is time synchronization, check mark on it, so you can synchronize the time from the host. These two is very important. And what will be happen? Whenever you have this check mark, every month, if you use this BM for a Windows, and every month you need to apply the Windows patch. When you apply the Windows patch, your machine gonna be rebooted automatically, right? To when you apply the patch. So when your machine is rebooted, that's why it says check and update BMR tools before each power on. So when it's rebooted, then it's gonna be power on, right? So on the power on time, if there is any like update available for BMR tools, it's gonna be installed automatically, which is called 
Hematools automatic installation. So don't forget to check mark on it. That's all and click next and finish. So your virtual machine configuration is done, which is this one, right? Now, if you forget to do something, uh, any, any, any options, you, you just go back again. How you go back again? Just select the machine and right click on it and go to the edit options, edit settings, and then you'll get the same previous window, right? So you can change it from there. So it's pretty simple. Thank you, thanks for watching this video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want, you can subscribe my channel and also click the bell icon. That's how you can get all the updates. Um, if I make another video, you'll get it and you'll get the notification. Thank you, thanks for watching.